Hey guys, it's James here from eBay's Guitar and today I'm going to be sharing the bridge section of Stuck in the Middle with you and also a concept called the whole step approach. So if you're interested in that, check this lesson out all the way to the end. Hey guys, it's James here from eBay's Guitar and today's lesson we are going to be covering the bridge section of Stuck in the Middle with You by Steelers Wheels. This is a popular request from you guys, the subscribers of the YouTube channel and the eBay's Guitar blog, because we covered the verse section a few weeks back and you said, James, can we get this one down? And of course, here we go with the lesson. So let's check out, first of all, what the bridge section sounds like, then we'll take it apart later in this lesson. <music> So guys, the first thing you need to know is that there's a completely free PDF which comes with this lesson, which covers all of the materials that we're gonna talk about today. All you need to do is visit the eBay's Guitar blog and you can download that there. The second thing is the backing tracks that we use in this lesson are available as part of the Bass Lab Plus membership. So please do check that out. It's a place where you can get all of the eBay's Guitar step-by-steps courses. That's like over 120 step-by-step -step video lessons. It's an amazing, amazing resource. You also get access to the monthly masterclasses and you get coached and mentored by me. So I will personally help you with your bass playing and you get also access to the, all of the backing tracks that we use on the eBay's guitar blog. So there's just like a whole wealth of great bass material there. So let's dig deep into the bridge section now. The bridge section is a slightly unusual length. It is a 10 bar bridge. In music, we're used to dealing more with four, eight, 16 bar sections, but this is 10, it's a little bit unusual. As I've said a few times before, music is both an art and a science, and it's always great when you start to see people break the rules a little bit. And particularly at the end of this bridge section, there's a very, very interesting thing that I'm gonna share with you in just a second. But let's talk about the structure of the bridge to begin with. So what happens, we're in the key of D, so, and we've got this riff idea. So visit the previous lesson, and you can hear how to play the verse, which I and you'll be familiar with this. And then we hit the bridge and we go up to the G chord. So that is chord four. So we have two bars of G like this. Then we go back to two bars of D. Then we go back to two bars of G again. Then we have this kind of very, very interesting little breakdown section at the end for the last four bars that I'm gonna talk about, which is kind of a bar, two bars of D, and then we have this cheeky kind of A minor chord, which sounds really great to me. Very, very interesting. But the bass does something quite interesting too, which we'll talk about in a second. But let's talk about this G chord, because what happens is we go from playing the riff, which we're really comfortable with, the that kind of nice funky idea. And then we hit these pumping eights, so. Like so. And what you'll hear on the drums is the drums change to 16ths too. So they're going and we're playing eights. And this is just a really great way of kicking it up a gear for those two bars. You will often hear me talk about on the blog uh, how music is all about light and shade. And this is really what puts the energy in. It's the light and shade between the pumping eights and the riff, which is really, really integral to this song. So we can very easily put a little bracket over the top there to show we go to pumping eights. And then we have the riff there. Then at the end of this song, we have this offbeat thing going on. They have the cowbell on beats two and four. So it sounds 
like this. We play the first note, then we play two and four in each bar like that. And this is what the cowbell is doing. So let's just write this in. Like that. And that's what it looks like. Uh, throughout all of this, what's really, really interesting is if you listen to these notes, you can very, very clearly hear the D going on throughout all of this. So these notes are Ds. But when we change to the A minor chord, you can very clearly hear the D in there. But I can also kind of hear an A minor bass note on the front of the bar too. So I don't know whether that was something kind of interesting that happened in the recording process for that song. Uh, be very interesting to find out. So we kind of have this clash going on with an A minor with a D in the bass. It's really, really kind of interesting. Um, it might be one of those kind of things which works well in the studio, but when you get live, you might want to uh, sort of have your own judgment whether you play a D or an A there at that point. It's completely up to you whether you go with what the guitar part does or whether you kind of stay true to that D, which is kind of uh, plonking away with the um, uh, with the cowbell going on. So let's play this so you can actually hear what this sounds like in, uh, in context. What we're going to do is we're going to loop this 10 bar section apart, uh, around, and then I'm going to show you how we can put some variations in there, some, some of the interesting little things that the bass player's doing. So let's try it with the track. So first of all, get that under your fingers, get really, really comfortable with switching from the pumping eights back to the riff again and placing these offbeat um, uh, crotchets, sorry, quarter notes, these Ds, and particularly uh, when we go to the A minor there, you might find yourself having to do a little bit of counting to place those right, um, really get your foot tapping, that would really, really help things along. But now let's talk about um, some variations that you can hear the bass player doing. I'm going to talk about a concept that I call the whole step approach. It's a really, really great thing, particularly to use in rock music. So it works great over these pumping eights. And let me draw out um, a couple of bars of pumping eights so you can see how these work. Like this. So these are the eighth notes. Like this. And I'm going to do another bar of them, like this. So what we can do, if you imagine all of these are Gs, is that we can make certain, one, certain notes of this F. And we can do this approaching the strong beats in the bar. So, so a great place to put this, this whole step approach. So we're approaching from a whole step. So this is an F to a G. I'm going to take a different color. Is on the last one of the bar. So I'll play you what that sounds like. So like that. So we could take that one there. So and let's let me play you this so you can hear what this sounds like. that you can do them as little patterns but they're also I'm gonna write you out in the PDF like two or three different variations of this but you can start putting these in in different places so what we could do is we could do one on the second beat of the bar so the two and which is approaching the third beat of the bar um, we could stick one in here like so so that which is approaching the fourth beat of the bar so and and on the four and like that. So let's let me just play it to you so you can hear what this variation so or you might want to miss a couple of outs so So basically you can 
You can put um, the whole step in to approach the strong beats of the bar. So it works great on the particular and, on the and notes. So the beats, uh, one and, two and, three and, and four and. So check them out on the PDF and you'll see some examples of this. You want to, you want to use your own taste and subtlety uh, of how much you use these. Um, for me, just throwing the occasional one in works really, really well and just adds a little bit of excitement and interest. The other one you could do is you could actually do um, a chromatic, not a chromatic, a whole step approach to the D. So you could do, um, say, put a, a C to go uh, there, like that. So rather, we are aiming for the D there on the first beat uh, of the third bar of this section, but on beat four and of the previous bar, we could put a C like this. So if I was to play you what that would sound like, um, I'll write this out in the PDF so you can see exactly what this sounds like. Just about to lose the pen there, but we're going to go. Like that. Oh, one. Etc. It reminds me a little bit of that sort of 50s Eddie Cochran thing when they were doing that. The early rock and roll is a device that they use there, but it's really, really effective. And I mean, I definitely. Something that I would definitely do when I play um, rock lines. And you can really, really, really hear, really clearly hear the Steelers wheel, Wheels bass player doing using this idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play. Um, I'm going to play that uh, that loop, that section, and I'm going to put some of these whole step approaches in there so you can hear what this sounds like. So guys, the last thing I want to do is put both sections together. Put the verse that we covered in the previous lesson and the bridge that we've covered in this lesson. So you can hear how these two sections sit together. In reality, there's like a four bar link section where they're just grooving on the original at certain points. So you really want to go through and just really sort out the exact structure. But effectively, there are only two sections that you need to know in this song. and. It, they basically alternate too. So let's put them together. I'm gonna to have some fun with this and play some of my own bass lines over the top of it so you can hear the sort of thing that I would do when I get on a gig. So let's try it out.
So that was how to play the bridge section of Stuck in the Middle with You by Steelers Wheels. Don't forget to grab the free PDF that comes with this lesson. You can also get the backing tracks if you're a member of the Bass Lab Plus 2. There's a link below in this post, so make sure you check that one out too. Once again, I've been James from eBay's Guitar. If there are any other tunes that you would love us to cover on the eBay's Guitar YouTube channel, please do comment in the comments below. And also, don't forget to give us a like and share on social. I've been James, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers for now.